So this is the Manhattan neighborhoods tiers list. I'm gonna start with the Northern end of the city and then just slowly make my way south. First up, we've got Inwood. What can I say about Inwood? It's kind of a chill little neighborhood. I do like all the nature stuff out there. It can get sketchy in parts, but overall very pleasant. I could see myself maybe not living there, but visiting a bunch for sure. There's a lot of like little nooks in these uptown neighborhoods. Next one is Washington Heights. This is such an iconic neighborhood, very predominantly Hispanic, very well known from um, Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights. And it's become kind of hot property over the past a uh, couple decades just because a lot of developers realize you're still in Manhattan and you're very close to the center of everything. Uh, but it hasn't really fully gentrified. Like when you go there, it still feels very community oriented. It doesn't feel very whitewashed or very full of um, high rises and condos and stuff like that. There are lots of like old style brick apartments and such. I also love the rolling hills over there and the views. It really has this feel of like classic New York. And so for that reason, I give it an A. Uh, next one is Harlem. Harlem is an iconic neighborhood. It's got a lot of history to it. It's a neighborhood that has had its issues with crime for quite a long time. Uh, and then the other issue that people will have with it is gentrification on the other side of the coin. Now you're in a neighborhood that has some crime, but also the property values are heavily inflated for what they are. And you can't get a chopped cheese for $5 anymore anywhere. So that's something unfortunate that's kind of been transforming Harlem. It is a super important cultural hub historically, and you still do feel echoes of that. It does kind of resonate, but you know, you also walk down 125th street and then you've got the contrast of, uh, these condos and then, uh, people who are strung out on crack walking the streets. And it's, it's not a good vibe for anyone really, unfortunately, but super important neighborhood. I would probably give it a, a B minus overall. Okay, next one is the Upper West Side. I really like this neighborhood in terms of just the architecture. Like it just has this very homely feel to it. I love all the restaurants and such on Broadway and Columbus and uh, it's right by Central Park, which is a big selling point. And it just feels very family oriented. This is a place where if you have, you know, if you can drop 5,000 a month on rent, uh, I highly recommend it. And if you can't, well, I mean, it's fun for a visit, I guess. So I would probably put it in the A minus category. Next one is Upper East Side on the other end of the park. So I quite dislike this neighborhood in a lot of ways. I'm not going to rank it too, too low, but there is something about the Upper East Side, which has this very like exclusive, like you can't sit with us, you're too poor to be here sort of vibe that I don't really get from the Upper West Side. Like Upper East Side is where you go to seclude yourself. Like you've made millions of dollars and you're like, okay, I'm just going to live in this building with a doorman with my dog. And then maybe if I want, just go down Madison Avenue and go shopping. And that's another thing that I kind of uh, draws me away from the neighborhood is like, it's a big shopping hub, which I truly don't care about. Some people value that I really don't. And there's not really anywhere affordable at all, like nowhere affordable to eat. That's one thing I, I really disliked about hanging around this neighborhood when I was younger. I mean, they used to have like these, uh, hot dog stands and such but everything is like so inflated here it's just uh minus the fruit stands the fruit stands are kind of a nice addition so i would probably rank this uh on the low c category for me personally okay the next one is midtown and oh man it's impossible to live in in terms of rent it's over touristed which locals are going to hate and it's just very sterile, like that whole area between, I would say, maybe 33rd and 59th Street. There's a lot of 
fun tourist stuff that if you're there as a tourist for your first time ever visiting New York might be cool to you. But once you've seen it a thousand times, you just get so used to it. Everything is like so corporate. It's just kind of like copy paste of like sweet green and Chick-fil-A and Whole Foods. But it's New York. So there are obviously going to be some local spots, but the local spots that are there are going to be quite expensive because of the tourism uh, because of the expense and just because of like the uh, the crowdedness and the corporate hellhole feel. This is kind of like the side of Manhattan that if you go there, you would probably be like, oh, I hate New York. It's like, yeah, because you saw this side of New York. And of course, it's going to be loud and crowded and overwhelming. So I would put it in the D category. Okay, next one is Hell's Kitchen. I've grown to quite respect this neighborhood. I like all the restaurants on 9th Avenue. I like that they've resisted a lot of attempts to gentrify the neighborhood or at least change you know, the name of the neighborhood to, I think Clinton is what they were trying to call it. I have a video about that. And yeah, Hell's Kitchen, it's got this sort of edge to it still that is a remnant from the 80s and 90s. It is still like an expensive-ish neighborhood, but you can still go to like affordable bars and restaurants and such. Given the location for like how close it is to Midtown, you wouldn't think it's that great, but there's actually a lot of like affordable things if you know where to look. So I would put it in the B plus uh, category. Okay, the next one is Hudson Yards. Really, really, really dislike what Hudson Yards symbolizes for New York. I mean, yeah, it is cool to like see a new skyline as part of New York City, but everything there just feels so sterile and corporate and whitewashed. It's really not a place that anyone should go to live if they have a personality at all. It's like, it's a place where you go to kind of lose your soul and become this corporate worker drone. And you could say I'm being too negative because the neighborhood really just popped up and uh, is only starting to get an identity. But that's sort of the exact problem. It's an artificial neighborhood and it feels very artificial. And, you know, no one who's there is from there. And there's sort of no reason to be there. There's no like local institutions at all. There's nothing there older than really 10 years. It's just very bland to me. So I would put it in the D category. Okay, next one. Uh, this is one of my favorites, the Lower East Side. There's uh, a lot of old, like I'm talking over a hundred years old institutions in the Lower East Side. It's sort of ground zero for like the punk and street art and graffiti and music scenes. Um, tons of great bars over there. It's got this grimy edge to it, which not everyone will enjoy or identify with, but I think is sort of perfect for the kinds of things that I'm looking for. I would probably put it in the S tier for myself. And then the next one is Chinatown. I really love all the food out here. Uh, you could still go to the fruit stands and get super cheap fruit, or you can go to like the meat markets out there. You can get those like Hong Kong style pancakes for a dollar, maybe $2 now, get spring rolls out in the street. It's kind of awesome for that. You know, they got like people just reselling either stolen or bootleg luxury items. So it's a good place to get a good deal. Uh, it does have like this weirdly fishy smell in some places. And, uh, you know, that's just a consequence of like them having those meat markets. And sometimes it does get like very garbagey, uh, more so than a lot of other neighborhoods, unfortunately just because everything is like so tightly packed together and New York still has not figured out that you should put trash in a container rather than just put it out on the street. So those are some points away from it. But other than that, I love the neighborhood. It is going in the A tier. The next one is Kipps Bay. This neighborhood is one that, again, I find a little sterile. There's a lot of like finance bros and tech bros that sort of live there and in the midtown area which they call 
uh, Murray Hill, which is incredibly confusing because there's also a neighborhood called Murray Hill in Queens. Yeah, once I hear someone say the term Murray Hill, by the way, I just know like, oh, I'm not going to get along with this person. It's got like this sports bro vibe. They do have like some, I guess, like some nice Irish bars and stuff. Koreatown is close to here. Uh, like the tiny little two block stretch that we call Koreatown, I suppose. And so you can go out and get karaoke here. You can have fun in Kips Bay, I suppose, but it's really not a place I'd see myself visiting or living much. I'd probably put it in like a C minus. Next one is Union Square. I don't know if this is just me or my perception has changed, but I really feel like Union Square has lost a lot of character since... Uh, about 2012 onward. I remember it was a, a major site for Occupy Wall Street and so on. And then I don't know if people died out or got priced out or whatever it is, but it just feels like so either sterile now or familiar, familiar in a way that it's like things you don't want to necessarily be familiar with. So like, you know, you'll see the Hare Krishna people and you'll see the, uh, the dude's hustling you for chess and you'll see certain panhandlers uh, and musicians that I guess make it their mission to just hang around Union Square but I don't know something about I really don't know if it's me that's changed or if it's always been whack and I'm just opening up to that but all the groups that hang around there are not really groups that I've ever wanted to hang around. I do have a lot of great memories here, but they are truly stuck in the past. So this Union Square area, I'm going to give a C tier. Then Little Italy or Microscopic Italy at this point, as I like to call it, because it's shrunk so much. It does have a great vibe. It is super tiny these days. But if you really want to feel like you're in old school New York and you want to go to these cafes and these restaurants and you want someone to sing to you in Italian and get like a, a pretty nice pasta dish, it is really great for that. It's great for a night out with your family and friends. They have uh, the Feast of San Gennaro is always popping. Uh, whether you've just moved to the city or whether you've been for a long time, I can find myself coming again and again and still kind of enjoying the vibe of the neighborhood. So um, I would probably say it's an A minus for me. Then you've got the meat packing district. I really don't know what to call this area anymore. The area around the High Line, it used to be the meat packing district and uh, it used to be a much more edgy sort of place. It was meat packing, right? So they would I think they used to have all the slaughterhouses and stuff there. And the High Line is basically an old freight line that got converted into a park. And now you can see by the photo there, everything is like so, uh, I mean, it, it really does look super like whitewashed and gentrified in a way. I do love the design of a lot of the buildings here, honestly. Um, and just the streets, like the old cobblestone and stuff, the old brick, all the, uh, there's all these art galleries in the area. Um, you know, I, I guess we can group this together, like meatpacking and Chelsea, like big gay scene there, if you're into that. But overall, you know, it's just gotten so heavily gentrified that a lot of the edge that used to be there is not there and you just get these giant apple store ads and i think there's like a google headquarters something in that neighborhood has been lost unfortunately the high line is nice as a park but i think i really preferred it as like an abandoned structure but it's it's new york city they would never let anything that cool ride for that long so i would probably put it in the c tier okay uh, next neighborhood is the West Village, another absolutely beautiful neighborhood. So one thing about the West Village that I, I quite enjoy is just the design of the streets, old cobblestone, very tight, very confusing grid, which is one thing I dislike about the neighborhood, but also something that's fun because you can just walk down the street one direction and then end up in a completely different place. Again, this is a place where if you have a lot of money, absolutely just go and get a place there. You're very close to New Jersey if you care about that. A lot of uh, great things in like the bar and restaurant scene here, although quite expensive. So I tend not to go out here. 
And then, you know, you've also got like the huge stand up comedy scene in the West Village. It's sort of iconic for that specifically, like when people think about New York as like a hub for comedy in the United States, this is generally the neighborhood that they're thinking of. And then it does have its negatives, right? It does have like the NYU kids that sort of overrun the area a lot of the time. And it does have the sports bros that occupy the sports bars, but I guess that could be a problem anywhere. But overall, I just really love the design of this neighborhood. So I'm going to put it in the A tier. Okay, the next one is Soho. There's really not a lot for me in Soho. One thing I'm judging it on is based on not so much what I see on like the buildings of Broadway, because I really don't go into those buildings. There's really nothing for me. I'm not a shopper kind of person, uh, but I just absolutely adore the cobblestone streets that all the cars have to drive slowly through and that they rattle along. I really love the design of the buildings and how close and tight everything is. But again, there's not much for me in terms of like the, the shopping. So beautifully designed neighborhood, not entirely for me. I'd probably put it as like a B minus. And then there's the financial district. It's kind of a double-edged sword because yes, it is impossible to live in these days as far as the rent goes. And yes, you do have all the finance bros and all the rich Wall Street people who hang around there. But also there's something charming about lower Manhattan and how like well-preserved a lot of things are there. Like you can see some of the most beautiful architecture that New York City has to offer in this area. And I love the South Street Seaport area, just seeing all the ships out there. Seeing the skyline by the harbor is super nice. And there is this interesting sort of feeling where I feel like when I was a kid, it used to be like really brown and gray as far as the background. And now it's sort of gotten shiny and glassy. And it, it's kind of like representative of like, oh, here's a really nice representation of New York City to look at. It's just very iconic. And I, I love that you can go to a place that was around in like 1700. The fact that it has so many old institutions and uh, so much old infrastructure, old in like the new world, like American sense, I would probably put this in the B tier. And that's my ranking of New York City uh, neighborhoods in Manhattan.